maybe because this is a more traditional market or industry, I should say. Um, and not that anyone is slow to adapt. I think everyone who's still here has adapted, but I think we're facing a lot of technical changes, a lot of digital changes for everywhere, everything that we've gone through Santa, right? Yeah. Um, AI, AI is going to change everything. So, yeah. right. So how do you adapt to that? Um, how do you embrace it and, and yeah. not be fearful of it? Um, because it is a hard thing to understand, even though we're faced with it all the time and we might yeah. not even realize it, right? Your phone listens to you and it feeds things up, right? Yeah. Um, you, you know, you're searching for things and it, it knows what you want. It's delivering it based on your past yeah. search experience. Sure. So yeah. um, we don't realize all of that's artificially driven. What will you do to unlock innovation? In today's fast-paced world, innovation might not be enough. Tomorrow's pioneers of change will need to be agile, able to adapt, and committed like never before. Your host, Santa Vending, invites you to listen in and join business leaders from around the world as they share their visions for success in our future business challenges. Welcome to Mind Innovation. I'm your host, Sana Vinding, and today I'm joined by Mary Ellen Stack. And together we will be exploring the world of the manufacturing industry where we'll discuss marketing and sales challenges, B2B marketing, and also in industrial trends. Mary Ellen Stack is the Director of Marketing Communication for Saga Electronics, and she's also an active member of the industry various organization, including ECIA, EIA, and Women in Electronics. She received a bachelor degree in political political science with a business minor from the University of Massachusetts. Welcome, Mary Ellen. Thank you, Santa. I appreciate that. I'm so glad to have you here. And it's so fun, right? Because we've been connecting over the last couple, I think maybe since December, a couple of times because of all the things we've done together now. Um, we have. So, yeah. So I'm just it's like know, getting together with an old friend now. Sam. Yeah. Right. It's, it. it's, it's, it's great how to see that we meet in person, right? We're actually looking at each other. But, and now this is also looking at each other. But, you know, it's just so great to see how we can actually continue our networking. So so that's that's yeah. why I love to have you here today. So well, let's. I'm, uh, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So let's let's jump into it. So because this is exciting, we both love marketing. <laughs> so um, how's how's the role of marketing in manuf in the manufacturing industry? How how has that changed over the last couple of years? Well, for me, from what I've seen in my in in my role, and I've been with my company for almost twenty three years now. Um, you know, when I first joined the industry, it was all about print, right? Everything was in a hard format. Um, and it was all about, can you get your ad on page, whatever of the, the EE times or yeah. whatever the publication was. Right. Um, and then it quickly, I would say in the first five years evolved to digital and that's really where it's been. But I would say over the last, you know, five years, it's really proliferated, right. Where yeah. it's not just advertising on, um, electronic publications anymore or, um, you know, trying to use those properties. It's, it's, it's much broader, right? It's social, yeah. it's, it's video, it's podcasts. So it, it's really gone from, you know, this place that was so traditional to now really the opportunities are endless. So it's, it is an exciting time to be part of it. Um, it can be a little overwhelming at times trying yeah. to, to keep up um, and to be as savvy as you can with the resources that you have, but it's exciting. Yeah, no, I agree. It's 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 there's always something new, right? Or something's trend changing, or something is trending. Um, and right. Then you see that. Uh, I I love to get inspired <laughs> from other industries. Um, that's it, that's it's true. true. And in some ways, I think because we were so traditional, you know, the you know for years very traditional. Yeah. Um, I think Google changed that, right? And then from Google, social changed things, and then all of a sudden you have this digitization of tools, yeah. um, access to more data, access to really understanding that customer experience. So it, it's it's unleashed all types of opportunity. Yeah. Um, and that's so how again right because so, so we, we we can agree on that one right it's been it's yes. been a journey <laughs> for marketing what about the relationship between marketing and sales how has that journey over many many years you know how has that has that changed or is it you know what does it look like i think you know in our my current organization you know 
we're small in comparison. We're not small, but we were small in comparison to a lot of other companies in, in this industry. Um, so we always had a strong relationship with our sales leadership, you know, marketing and sales and our, our executive leadership is not extensive, right? And it's been a core group for a long time. But you're right, we were working in silos in a lot of ways. And we weren't always necessarily connected where I may have felt the pressure from suppliers from the manufacturer to be pushing certain things where sales may have been like, no, I don't need that push. So I think over the last few years, what really happened, and it was probably driven a lot by the pandemic was that shift where you have to start thinking sales is marketing and marketing is sales. Like we, yeah. we might have different job descriptions, but at the end of the day, that whole customer experience is really what's driving us. So it's a, it's a commonality and to, you know, it really requires more of a collaboration in terms of strategy and how, how do you want to service that customer? So, yeah. So have you been, and been defining, you know, even if it's personas or is it more the, the journey of, you know, how you, you work together with your So customers? we're doing both. We were always pretty strong at, you know, the identifying, is it a medical customer? Is it an industrial customer? Um, that has been part of our strength for years, um, drives a lot of our reporting. It drives a lot of our um, our internal marketing efforts that go out, right, using our own platforms. Yeah. Um, now it's more, we're now looking at, okay, what is that journey? And, and how does it, how does it tie into what we already know, right? So how does a medical customer come in and maybe get to a, a, a solution? How does an industrial customer use the site? Um, and then we have engineering and purchasing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Again, two different ways, two different means of getting to data. So you really have to be considerate of of who that customer is and, and what type of experience it is that they're looking for and plan for you know, the best, the best approach, but from multiple views, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You never know Sorry. which door. <laughs> yeah. But you never know, right. With, with a customer, which door they're opening to get in either to look for the information or get, get, get more information, right. Or get educated, right. educated around it. So it's right. all, and, and, yeah. and, and we're looking at tools for better doing that. Right. And we're building a new website. Um, it's taken a little longer than we wanted. Um, But that's that's the goal, right? Is how how do you help um, yeah. get to that end result, right? Yeah. We're, yeah. we're here to solve problems, right? We're not really here to just sell sell apart. And I think that's also been a big transition for the industry overall, too, right? It's not just about pushing the features and benefits of a product anymore. They're getting inundated with with yeah. these types of emails. It's really how do you solve the problem? So, yeah. you know, we've tried to position ourselves that way. <laughs> excuse me, and try to develop our sales structure that way as well, right? Where we have specialists who focus on products, certain product sets, but that can help our sales organization really pull those, yeah. those solutions through. So, yeah, oh, that's, that, that makes sense. What about uh, about the, the, the pandemic, right? Because that pushed everyone, like it's pushed not just everyone. the power industry, right? It touches everything. Um, wh what about the the you know, the platforms or the technology. So if you have like a CRM system, because again, right. Right, you need to have sales and marketing, both loving it, right? And not pointing at each other and saying, you own it, right? <laughs> it has right. to be joined. Um, have you seen any, you know, what you experience there, anything you can recommend or an advice to say, you know, what what will actually make it, make it good for marketing and sales to, to be together about a CRM system? So we have a homegrown built, system um and we did that we did that a long time ago after we had put our erp system in and it was kind of during those times right when the industry got really lean so we built our own system but the system is set up in such a way that if sales comes in and they enter an opportunity they identify you know the proper parties for that opportunity to get shared with right yeah so so anyone who has ties needs to know, okay, we have an opportunity at customer A. If there is a manufacturer rep associated, they get an email, marketing gets an email. So all parties are 
communicated with. And that's the structure with which we, we manage those types of situations and those types of accounts. That information comes in especially hand, handy for marketing where yeah. as long as that salesperson has put in all the requisite information, yeah. we're, we're sending them when we are doing our marketing campaigns, we are, we're sending them the data that they're looking for, the information that they're looking for, right? We don't yeah. want to send a DC to DC converter for the a rail system to a medical customer, right? Yeah. So, so the better the information that sales enters and the better that we respond in terms of what, what we can do for the opportunity, the better I am at my job in terms of supporting sales efforts, but also making certain that customer, we're not hitting them with things they don't care about, right? We don't want to turn them off that way. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I'm getting so many emails where I'm like, how do I get out of it? And then even if I did get out of it <laughs> later, then get a new one. A I think later. sometimes you can, get, they, they do recycle. Things. Yeah, right. Um, they do recycle. Yeah. Yes, they do recycle. And, and so we're very cognizant of that. And a lot of what we do right now, Santa, is really at that higher level but i was speaking with um brian flint he's our vice president of sales the other day and he was showing me you know we have this tool um and we've had it a long time and we call it the customer buying report but it really would show us where are we not helping a customer right it would show yeah. you those empty blocks yeah. well they've really kind of taken that and drilled it down now where we can get much more granular and much more specific yeah. and i'm like all right well how do i help you with this right yeah. how do i now take this data that you have and yeah. really make those messages specific to those, those customers. Right. So maybe they're not just medical customers. They're, they're creating some sort of portable device and they need, you know, a, a, a battery, you know, a backup battery or something like that. So it's, it is exciting. And that collaboration I think is really, um, I don't want to say it was forced through the pandemic, but I do think we all recognize like, Oh gosh, you know, if we're going to get through all of this, we have to kind of work together and, and, yeah. and really think about, um, you know, how, how to do things better. Yeah. Yeah. You got, we got pushed day. into making some better decisions or, or maybe trying different things and figuring out what works, what doesn't Totally. Work. I mean, did yeah. you, well, you may have, cause you're, you've been savvy in this environment, but <laughs> Before teams, I would yeah. never show my face on yeah. a meeting. I was yeah. always like, no, I don't want to show my face. Now it feels <laughs> rude to not show your face. And and so we're much more comfortable in this type of situation. Yeah. Um, you know, we're becoming savvy, savvier with how we use the technology and these types of platforms. So yeah. um, the opportunities, you know, there were opportunities that did come out of a devastating time, right? But yeah. I think we learned and we adapted. And I think adaptability is key to everything. Oh, yeah, it is. But what about the whole data collection? And now you're just saying, right, you had some data. So have you had that escalated? And you're not that you are, but some could be, have the feeling that they're drowning in data, right? And like, how do I, you know, how do you look at it? So how, so, how, do, you how do you have a healthy, like, uh, angle or check on, on your data? So we have a business analytics group and that helps. Um, we've employed a, a business um, data system, SciSense, that helps, right? Instead of it used to be like, you'd go into your ERP, you'd, you'd derive a query, it would spit back the report and we would make all those reports available to our sales team. But I mean, they were report upon report. I think having SciSense and the ability to maybe more concisely share the data yeah. um, ha has been really helped drive a lot of the decisions that we're making around inventory investments and the suppliers that we're working with and how to better support our customers. So um, I would say if you can invest in some sort of business data yeah. management tool, um, much more helpful than driving queries out of your, you know, ERP system. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we all have access to that, right? It's it's so much easier now taking a look back and saying, all right, well, we had this percentage in power, we had this percentage in connector, um, this percentage in sensors. Um, it, so it gives us a definitely a better better view of our business. Yeah, that that sounds good. And it's it's also taking it in bites, right? And finding out, you know, let's let's learn this area and get good at it, and then you can. Skip. It is. Yeah. It is. I think our next challenge really is. So we're working on this new website and there'll be different tools in and around that. And in our current website, right, we have SEMrush, we have Moz. We're, we're trying to track that 
journey. Yeah. Um, but I believe in the new site and with the different tool set, we'll be able to better understand what it is a customer is looking for. And yeah. then to be able to feed that into the SciSense platform is ultimately really the goal. So that if we have programs with a supplier that you know we're doing j- jointly, we want to be able to provide that ROI. Yeah. So I, I, I think having access to the to the data to make the right decisions and then to report back on that is really where from for me what what's important to my role. Yeah. Okay. What I want to ask you a little bit about the, about the new website, but I want to ask and saying because again, back to the pandemic, right? And it's yeah. maybe just everything is pandemic, but the whole self-service or how we as a B2C, right? How we are, are getting more, you know, you go on the website or you you check your status or if you, if, if you order something, it could be yeah. Amazon, right? Or you cancel something or you have to return something or you push look something out. Yeah, right? It's the Not whole... Not that we want anyone to push anything out, but yeah, yeah push out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then yeah. suddenly if something you can figure out, you want to talk to a person, you don't want to press, you know, all these numbers when you have called the 800 number, right? And you're sitting there with the, you know, with the song. Right. So we have all kind of, we, we got new habits, we have new ways of of interacting, right? If it's anything mm-hmm. on the digital platforms. So have you seen now with your new website, have is any of this, you know, been affected and you're saying, oh my God, with the new website, we need to adjust, you know, taking some of the B2C habits and and implement definitely, that. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely B2C. B2C habits were so in our current environment, we do have that self-service model, but obviously you're going to a new environment and you want to be able to enhance that experience. And yeah. completely that B2C experience was part of the decision and design process. Um, And, you know, we might have to do it in phased approaches given, you know, first it was, let's just get the current functionality in and make certain that we don't do anything to ruin the service levels that they're receiving now. But then what else do we need to provide them? And I can tell you um, from my perspective, things like product change notifications or things where they'll see it, we'll email it to them, but they might, lose track of that, you know, yeah. tying that into their the information that they're able to get through their self-service model, yeah. um, those types of things, right, where they don't have to go searching for, for a bit of information that we've shared. Yeah, so yeah, you want to make it like fr- friction less or friction free, right? So it's as it's best as you order. possibly yeah. can. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So obviously, parametric search, um, attributes, data yeah. sheets, you, you yeah. want all of all of that to make a better experience, right? For yeah. the customer to make an informed decision. Yeah. No, no, no. That's it's a it's it's funny how it's I don't know if the word is funny, but it's just you, you we do get inspiration, right? From our B2C experience into the B2C Oh world. Amazon changed the world, right? Yeah. And yeah. and good in good ways and bad ways right it's hard now right don't you just expect i ordered something the other day from an online retailer and it took to the end of the day to get the confirmation and i thought yeah (laughs) i actually was like did i order it yeah (laughs) you know like i walked away yeah Yeah. and and so that wasn't the best experience and i won't name the retailer i won't besmirch them but I, and now I'm like, I haven't yet received a shipping notice. So yeah. Amazon's changed how we think about those things, Absolutely. right? Where you get yeah. that immediate confirmation, you get updates if whenever the shipping's coming and, and, yeah. and then they're telling you it's on its way, right? And it landed and they send you a photo of your front stoop. So yeah. um, it it it's those are definitely things, right? You have to take into consideration um, obviously, we're not Amazon. We don't want to be no. Amazon. No, 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 no. Um, but we do want to make certain that our customers are having the most positive experience possible. Yeah, I agree. And I've seen for the masses, at least. <laughs> <laughs> you do one of that. No, I yeah. also, but this is also in the in the B two C, right? There's much more. Uh, the, the QR codes to go in and if you have yeah. to learn something, they just scan that. You don't have to have your paper print, right? Yeah. Um, and, and when you get your receipt, right, it's just in your email. Um, right. So it's, it's, it's all there. Um, all now- of that payment methods, yeah. right? We're, yeah. we're slower to, I, I think some distributors have, I've seen it, but we're slower to like Venmo. We won't have Venmo right away, right? But eventually no. down the road, maybe that's something to consider, right? How yeah. how does a customer want to pay? Yeah. Um, 
and especially and not those larger customers that obviously have credit established with us in terms and, and, and those types of situations where they can go in and manage those things. But the customer coming in because we had the price and availability and they saw us on an inventory site, right? Yeah. Um, how do they, how do they want to pay? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And right now it's credit card. So. You can do it. <laughs> but there's new ways, right? We yeah, have to yeah. keep thinking have about to. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the, the skill set within the industry or if somebody's new, right? Because again, the industry, if you look at the whole, the, the age of, of in manufacturing or maybe in the yeah. uh, a little bit older, uh, there is coming yeah. new, 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 younger uh, are, people are coming in. Um, but but yes. you know, what, what kind of advice do you want to give to somebody who's who's coming into the industry? What's you know, how, how will they succeed? Um, um, I would, uh, to my team, my younger team, my first thing is try to get as much exposure to whatever you can. So don't shy away if there's something that scares you, you know, try, try, try. And if you struggle and you have issues, come and see me. Yeah. Um, so that would be my per first piece of advice, right? Um, I hate to say, don't say no. Um, but in terms of like, say we had some sort of project and it involved IT, but we're marketing, I got a lot of exposure by being parts of those more, you know, multifunctional cross departmental teams, right, where I was exposed to operations, IT, sales, so not just marketing. Um, the other thing I think for anyone is build your network, right? Yeah. Build your network. Um we talked about it at ERA when we did our panel together, but yeah. LinkedIn is a perfect place to do that online. Um, but also look for opportunities when there are things going on locally. If um, ERA has a local event, go. If yeah. CIA has a local event, go. If Women in Electronics has a local event, go. go. Yeah. Um, so, you know, don't shy away. Don't think that you're not worthy of going because you're new, right? I, I probably felt a little bit like that early on. Like, I don't know if I should be be here or do I belong here? Yeah. And, and and in retrospect, who wouldn't belong there, right? You're yeah. there to learn and get exposure and to meet people. So yeah, and, and those and, are two pieces of advice that I would try to give. Good. Yeah. What what about a mentor? Is that something you have used in your career? I have a ton of mentors, um, but never in a organized setting. Um, my boss is a mentor. He's my sponsor. Um, yeah. All of my colleagues I've learned from, and they've all helped me build my network by giving me exposure to the people that they work directly with. Yeah. Um, and then I got involved, right? And I'm actually now mentoring as part of the Women in Electronics group. Yeah. So this is my first time officially mentoring, um, although I feel I've I've done what was, you know, given to me. I've tried to reproduce that in my own informal ways. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of interesting to be part of a formal program now to, and to see it from the mentor side of things. Um, yeah. And from anything I've heard, the the mentor learns just as much as the mentee. Yeah, so that was my next one, right? If, yeah. if you want to regroup in a few yeah. months, you know, we can come back and do this again. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but that that that's what I heard from from a lot of people where they're saying, yeah, it's not just one way, right? It's actually both ways. Um, and, it, and I think that's critical. And what I'd like to see here, um, you know, so Sager was always great at identifying young talent and developing it, and then those those the telecom bus, like they were those two downturns that really, really hurt us. And then yeah. we, we were lean, right? So we, we did away with some of that. And, and now there's this effort, in both the sales and marketing sides of the business. And, I, you know, I think also probably in operations as well, but I'm close, more close to the sales leadership, um, where we're all trying to do that, right? Identify, yeah. find young talent, bring it in, identify, identify what they're strong at, um, and try to give them a path. Yeah, we need it. We need it. We need it. We need yeah. it. Um, yeah. Okay. Looking uh, a little bit into to the future, uh, and maybe the, the the talent here could be one of the challenges. But but I want to ask you, you know, what 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 do you think? Maybe it's within sales and marketing, but but you know, what what's some of the biggest opportunities or challenges that you see in 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 the future? Well, talent is for sure an issue, right? And, and yeah. hiring. Um, 
which I'm still not quite certain I wrap my head around, but um, it is hard. It is hard finding talent. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing we all face and, and maybe because this is a more traditional market or industry, I should say, um, and not that anyone is slow to adapt. I think everyone who's still here has adapted, but I think we're facing a lot of technical changes, a lot of digital changes for everywhere, everything that we've gone through Santa, right? Yeah. Um, AI, AI is going to change everything. So, yeah. right. So how do you adapt to that? Um, how do you embrace it and and yeah. not be fearful of it? Um, because it is a hard thing to understand, even though we're faced with it all the time and we might yeah. not even realize it, right? Your phone listens to you and it feeds things up, right? Yeah. Um, you, you know, you're searching for things and it, it knows what you want. It's delivering it based on your past yeah. search experience. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we don't realize all of that's, artificially driven. And, and yeah. so, you know, it was interesting just being part of the whole ERA planning committee, right. For the breakout yeah. sessions and, and seeing, seeing some of the feedback from past years and, and, and a lot of the, it, it, I think it's just something that we still haven't fully grasped. Yeah. And so to me, I think it's both the biggest opportunity and the biggest challenge and it all ties back to data really. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. And yeah. and also t making of getting that push, right? Even though we got the yeah. over the last couple of years, there's still if it's companies, right? Or if it's, if it's people, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, to 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 do it, right? Just uh get right. You don't want to lag now just because yeah. we we think we're on the other side of it, because you never know when the next situation is gonna come or yeah. You know, if those companies are adapting and changing and you don't and you fall behind, yeah, that where does that leave you? Right. You're not in a good spot if if you're not at least how you can keeping up yeah. with where where the world is going. Yeah. So right? yeah, so we all need to to you know keep learning, right? And and exploring and, and doing things. So so how do you learn? Do I learn? Um Well, again, I'm involved with the various industry associations, which leads to meeting other people like yourself, right? Or yeah. um, so I do think that whole networking thing is not only just about, you know, making certain you have connections. It's learning from those connections. I learn from everyone I meet, whether it's a positive lesson or sometimes <laughs> rarely, but sometimes it can yeah. be a negative. Yeah. Um, um, it could be a ne negative situation as well, but that doesn't mean it, I don't take something from it. So I love learning from my network, hearing what other people are doing, reading. I mean, reading yeah. uh, when you, I think you talked about it, right? That whole break um, and you're scrolling through LinkedIn, yeah, right? Don't you stop and you read what you're interested in? Yeah. Um, and so I think that's a great environment for doing that. And like you said, it is a timeout in a certain way, but you're you're getting exposed to bigger ideas or other things or technology or, or whatever it is that catches your interest yeah um so reading is a big one as well for yeah. me okay. um i think now that i'm a little on the older side training opportunities aren't quite what they used to be but i do try to participate when the various associations offer trainings um you know women in electronics obviously yeah. you know because you were involved early on um, have the leadership trainings and also the the um, personal development. Those those are helpful too. Sometimes just to to reset and ECIA. You know the different podcasts yourself right now. Yeah. I'm following you, Jordan. So it, I think those are just all the different ways now that we can take information in and and. <sighs> And learn. Yeah. Think, think bigger, right? Yeah. Think bigger. Yeah. It, to me, yeah. it's about thinking bigger and not just, I think this, I think yeah. that. Um, I, I want to be exposed to other people's ideas. That's awesome. I love, um, I also love YouTube. So you, you, I, you can really spend time sometimes scrolling, right? Where you're like, oh my yeah. God, I spent 20 minutes on scrolling and I actually did not <laughs> learn anything or read anything. That does right. happen. It's not that, uh, um, so if, if, 
sometimes I will actually jump to YouTube and then I will type in, even if it's where I say, I, I need to be better using this software, right? Or mm -hmm. I want to, or if it's a topic. And then I will like, I will listen or I will look at some of these YouTube videos and find one, right? Was there good at yeah. explaining it or have the, you know, the energy that I like. Um, so it, it's, it's funny, I think, how YouTube is crawling in on me on, on being an, a part of my educational yeah. journey as well. Yeah. And so. a lot of people I know do. I, my husband goes to YouTube all the time to figure yeah. out stuff. Um, I, I'm a little silly. You know, I use, I'm not a big social person, which may, might sound funny since I do like LinkedIn, um, but Instagram, I, yeah. I like, and I follow some guy that gives you Excel tips and my team yeah. laughed at me, um, but it's helpful. So. Yeah, but if, if you're getting these small tips, right, in small doses, right. that's that's right. a good way of getting it. And, and I think we have to look at social for the positives that way, right? There's plenty yeah. of negatives, but I, I think if we're using it, for the greater good versus some of the other um, yeah. fallout, if you will, then why wouldn't you take advantage of it? Right. And yeah. YouTube is. Yeah. It's amazing. It's pretty amazing. The yeah. things you can find yeah. there. Yeah. 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 It's not just video and what people are eating. Right. It's uh, that's much more. To yes. It. <laughs> yes. There is much more to it. Right. And it didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely much more to it. No. Um, so, okay. So, so Marion, what if you have to look back, right? And saying, yeah, what kind of advice would I give myself like 20 years ago? What, what kind of advice would you give yourself? I, I'm big on listening first so I can understand the situation and I have to write things down because I think there's something for me when I write and I connect, but I do wish I was more vocal with my ideas earlier on. Yeah. Um, I think when I first got into this industry and I was newly married and I was having children and that was where my focus was, I, I, I wasn't as outright in this, this environment, right? I was, was doing my job and I had to do my job well, cause that's my personality, but yeah. I wasn't trying to really go above what that, that role was. And then I don't know when I hit the certain point, maybe when my kids were coming out of daycare and going into elementary school yeah. where I thought, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm spending the majority of my work week, you know, 40 plus hours at my place of occupation. And I'm not going to get value out of it if I don't change my mindset. And so yeah. from that point forward, I, I kind of, I did have a plan. It was a general plan, but I knew I didn't want to just be doing what I was doing and that I really wanted to have an impact. And my manager was awesome with me in that regard. And I think just changing that mindset and, and becoming more confident to just share my ideas or to share yeah. my disagreements. Sometimes I'm like, why would yeah. we do that? Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I am surrounded by a lot of men, so it's changing. But yeah. it, back then, you know, my manager was a boss. My four colleagues who ran the commodities were were male, and yeah. I, but no, they it, were great. Like they were great. So it was yeah. like, why did I keep my mouth shut? <laughs> so yeah, and and help, and also have healthy conversations, right, or discussions. I think that that's, right. that opens up a lot of of new ways to solve you know, whatever task or whatever problem or initiative you have. So definitely. So for me, it was that mindset where I, I had to go from thinking, I like I had to realize I was both a mom and I could be a talented employee, right? I could yeah. be doing both very well if I, you know, with that goal um, and then using my voice. Two yeah. things I do wish I had considered earlier on yeah but it's always easy to look back and saying i should have done that right it's uh it's definitely it definitely but you know changed. you try to encourage yeah. your, if you have a team right you're trying to encourage them to share their ideas like i yeah. don't want everything to be my idea i get no. tired of listening to my voice sometimes right um <laughs> Like I, I don't want to talk. Sometimes I, I made it a point. I'm like, I'm not talking. I'm not gonna yeah, talk. Yeah. I'm not gonna talk. <laughs> right. Um, just to see what happens yeah. and, and to see them, them share and collaborate. Yeah. So, one of the, one of the things that I'm working on. Right. I think 
you know, before when you and I had talked and we were yeah. talking about the ERA conference. And I think yeah. her name was Cheryl Cran talked about that hero concept. And you want to, as a manager, swoop in and take care of everyone and be the hero and they all love you. Yeah. And I, I was probably, I probably did have some of that in the beginning because I went from being a one woman department to, you know, all of a sudden growing and, and it's hard to let go of the things that you're used to doing. Yeah. Um, but it's not good for your team's development if you if you do oh. that. So it was a it's been a hard transition. I still falter sometimes, but I'm I'm learning, Santa. I'm learning. Let it go, right? <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Yeah, let it go. Uh, no, that's, go do that's, what that's, you want. That's... Just don't cost thousands of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. That's I think it's it's good reflection and good learnings, right? And 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 it's also I think it's also important to say that the you're still learning. I'm still learning. Um, oh, it's, every day. It's, it's a journey, right? I make a mistake yeah. every day. I'm learning every day. Yeah. I probably say something silly every day. Well, then I was like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Um, but you also want to be authentic, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, no. Um, how is any, if any of the listener wants to, to reach out to you, how, how can they connect with you? I think the best way would be to reach me through my Sager email, um, mstack at sager.com. Um, Or they could connect with me through LinkedIn. I'm getting a lot of connections since the ERA event. So that's fun. <laughs> um, I enjoyed that. And that's also a good place for sharing content and information and getting to know someone. Um, but either either way is fine. I'd be great. Okay. Perfect. And yeah. I'll, I'll put that in, in the show notes and also make sure on the episode page on mindinnovation.com, I'll, I'll put it there as well. Oh. So everyone, it was awesome. I think it was great. And, you know, I love it. I had so amazing. much fun. Thank you for just, I just got through telling you I hate, don't want to talk so much anymore. And I blabbed for, for 25 minutes. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. If you like Mind Innovation, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share the show wherever you get your podcast. You can follow Senna Winding and Mind Innovation on Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And make sure to check out mindinnovation.com. Stay curious and keep learning. See you next time.